In the far reaches of the Pacific, there is a trench so deep and so dangerously misunderstood that some claim it could dethrone the Mariana as the ultimate abyss. Horizon Deep sits beneath roughly 1,000 atmospheres of pressure, cloaked in stories about nature's limits and scientific fear. Why do the numbers that name this alleged rival keep changing? And what really lies down there? The answer is more unsettling and more extraordinary than most people have been told. The Tonga Trench stretches across the southwestern Pacific, tracing a narrow, sharply defined scar east of the Tonga Islands. Unlike the broad, gently sloping abyssal plains that cover much of the ocean, this trench plunges steeply, dropping more than 10 kilometers from the surface to its deepest known point, Horizon Deep. Here, the seafloor lies farther below sea level than the summit of Mount Everest stands above it. The trench itself runs for roughly 800 kilometers, but its width can shrink to just a few dozen kilometers, with walls that fall away almost vertically in places. At these depths, the physical environment becomes almost unrecognizable. Water temperature hovers between one and two degrees Celsius, barely above freezing, and the darkness is absolute. Pressure builds relentlessly with every meter, reaching nearly 1,100 times what we experience at sea level. That is about a metric ton pressing on every square centimeter, enough to crush most materials not specifically engineered for these conditions. The trench is not a simple, smooth groove. Instead, its floor is a landscape of chaos. Steep scarps, sediment slides, and fractured blocks shaped by earthquakes and the constant movement of tectonic plates. Sediments raining down from above gather in pockets and ponds, funneled by the trench's steep sides. This sediment trap effect means organic matter, and minerals concentrate here, creating a chemical environment unlike anywhere else on Earth. Over time, landslides and slumps reshape the terrain, burying some areas under thick layers of mud while exposing raw rock in others. For anything living or operating in this world, survival depends on adaptation. Equipment must be built to withstand crushing forces and avoid getting swallowed by soft, shifting sediments. Life forms, if present, face a gauntlet of extremes, cold, isolation and pressure that would destroy the cellular machinery of most surface species. Yet the trench's depths are anything but empty. The constant delivery of organic material from above, combined with the unique chemistry of the Hadal zone, supports a hidden web of life and a dynamic geological engine. Mapping this environment is a challenge in itself. The narrowness of the trench and the instability of its slopes make it difficult to capture a complete picture with sonar or remotely operated vehicles. Even with modern technology, the risk of missing a deeper pocket or misreading the true shape of the trench remains. Every new survey brings the possibility of discovery or of correcting the record yet again. The Tonga Trench, and especially Horizon Deep, stands as both a physical and scientific frontier, a place where the limits of the known world are constantly being redrawn. In the early 1950s, a modest research vessel from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography set out across the remote Pacific. The ship, the research vessel Horizon, was part of the Capricorn Expedition, an ambitious effort to probe the least known reaches of the ocean. With a crew of scientists and technicians, Horizon carried the best tools available at the time, single beam echo sounders and a determination to chart the deep. Horizon, during the 1952 to 1953 cruise, the vessel traced a narrow course along a trench east of the Tonga Islands. The echo sounder's analog trace revealed something astonishing, a sudden dramatic drop in the sea floor, far steeper and deeper than the team expected. At one point, the signal stretched beyond the instrument's usual range, hinting at a depth that rivaled the greatest known anywhere on Earth. The team recorded a reading near 10,800 meters, a number that immediately stood out in post-war oceanographic circles. This was not just another deep spot. It was a potential contender for the title of the world's deepest place, at least in the Southern Hemisphere. The spot would come to be known as Horizon Deep, named for the very ship that first measured it. In the 1950s, this was a remarkable achievement. The technology of the day relied on single, downward-pointing sound pulses. Each measurement depended on assumptions about how fast sound moved through cold, salty water. Assumptions that could be off by tens or even hundreds of meters at these depths. Navigation too was a challenge. Crews used celestial fixes and early radio beacons, 
but the exact track of the ship could drift by hundreds of meters, making it hard to know if they had crossed the absolute deepest point. Horizon Deep Despite these uncertainties, the Capricorn expedition's data quickly entered scientific compilations. Horizon Deep appeared on world bathymetric charts, its depth rounded and re-quoted in books and lectures. For a time, it stood as the deepest measured point in the Southern Hemisphere and a serious rival to the Mariana Trench's Challenger Deep. The discovery fueled speculation. If such a depth could hide in the relatively little-known Tonga Trench, what else might be waiting in the world's least explored basins? Yet as oceanography advanced, the limitations of these early soundings became clear. The single beam method could miss narrow depressions or misjudge the true bottom when the trench floor was rugged or sloping. Sound speed in seawater, affected by temperature and salinity, was still poorly understood, and small errors multiplied over such enormous distances. As a result, the depth figures from the 1950s carried uncertainties of at least several tens of meters, sometimes more than a hundred at maximum depth. The legacy of the Horizons voyage was not just a new number on the map, but a challenge to future scientists to return with better instruments, fill in the gaps, and settle the question of which trench truly runs deepest. The seeds of the modern rivalry narrative were sown here in the analog traces and handwritten logs of a ship that dared to measure the abyss. Sound speed in seawater depends on temperature, salinity, and pressure. In the deep ocean, a small miscalculation in that speed can have outsized consequences. A one meter per second error in the assumed sound speed will shift a depth reading by seven or eight meters at the bottom of a trench like Tonga. Over 10 kilometers of water, these small uncertainties multiply turning a precise sounding number into a moving target. Acoustic mapping works by firing a pulse of sound from a ship and timing how long it takes to bounce off the sea floor and return. The basic relation is distance equals speed times time divided by two. The reality is far more complex. The path of the sound pulse bends as it passes through layers of water with different properties. Near the surface, where temperature can change quickly, the sound speed drops causing the poles to refract downward. At depth, rising pressure increases the speed again. Without an accurate full depth sound speed profile measured by lowering sensors all the way to the bottom, every calculation inherits a layer of guesswork. Refraction multi-beam sonar systems used on modern expeditions send out hundreds of beams at once, sweeping a wide swath of the sea floor. Each beam leaves the transducer at a different angle, and the further from vertical, the longer and more complicated its path. In a steep walled trench, the outer beams can strike slopes at sharp angles, reflecting off ridges or missing the trench axis entirely. Even a perfectly calibrated system can be tripped up by the natural chaos of the terrain. If the sound speed profile is off by just a fraction, the beams may register a false depth, sometimes making a slope look deeper or shallower than it really is. The challenge only grows when mapping a trench as narrow and rugged as Tonga. A single pass with a ship might miss the true deepest pocket by a few hundred meters horizontally and a few meters vertically, simply because of the way sound interacts with the water column and the sea floor. Early echo sounders with their broad beams and sparse tracks were especially vulnerable to these errors. Even today, with advanced multi-beam systems, the accuracy of the final map rests on the quality of the sound speed data and the ability to model beam paths precisely. To trust a depth number, scientists cross-check it with other methods. Pressure sensors deployed on submersibles or on landers offer a direct physical measurement of depth that can help anchor the sonar data. These instruments bring their own challenges, including calibration issues, instrument drift, and local gravity effects. The search for the true depth of Horizon Deep and its rivalry with Challenger Deep is as much about refining measurement as it is about exploring the unknown. Every expedition brings a new chance to close the gap between what instruments report and what lies beneath the waves. Dr. Heather, a steward, stands at the center of a new era in deep ocean measurement. As lead bathymetrist for the Five Deeps expedition, she faced a challenge that had stumped generations. 
how to pin down the true depth of Horizon Deep and finally settle which trench deserves the title of Earth's deepest. For this, the team turned to the most advanced tools in ocean mapping, a far cry from the single beam echo sounders and rough navigation of the 1950s. At the heart of their approach was the Kongsberg EL Mar 24 multi-beam sonar, a system built for full ocean depth surveys. On the expedition's research vessel, the DSSV Pressure Drop, this instrument swept overlapping swaths across the trench, firing out hundreds of acoustic beams at once. Each ping produced a slice of the seafloor, and together, these slices formed a grid with cells just 75 meters across. Over the course of the campaign, the team mapped more than 13,000 square kilometers of the trench floor, an area larger than Jamaica, at a resolution fine enough to catch even narrow depressions or hidden scarps. But sound alone can be deceiving. To anchor the sonar data to physical reality, Stewart's team deployed pressure sensors on deep diving landers and on the submersible limiting factor. These instruments measured the crushing weight of the water column directly, translating pressure into depth with the help of precisely calibrated sensors and local gravity models. Cross-checking pressure derived depths with sonar-based maps allowed the team to identify and correct for subtle errors, like variations in sound speed caused by shifting layers of temperature and salinity, or small biases in instrument calibration. Pressure sensors provided N, an independent line of evidence. Stewart's survey design aimed to remove every source of doubt. Multiple conductivity, temperature, and depth casts dropped to the very bottom, captured the water column's temperature and salinity profile, ensuring the sound speed model matched the real ocean at every meter of depth. The EM124's motion sensors tracked the ship's pitch, roll, and heave, correcting for the restless surface above. Each depth reading was referenced to a global geoid, tying the trench floor to a consistent planet-wide vertical frame. Global geoid kept the measurements comparable across expeditions. The result was a bathymetric map that left little room for myth or speculation. Where early explorers could only guess at the true bottom, Stewart's team delivered a grid so detailed that any depression larger than a city block would stand out. The pressure sensors, meanwhile, provided a physical check confirming that the numbers on the map were not just artifacts of sound, but grounded in the physics of the deep ocean itself. This integrated, uncertainty-budgeted approach is now the gold standard for Hadal mapping. Stewart's work not only clarified Horizon Deep's place in the global ranking, but also set a template for how all future trench measurements should be conducted. The days of single unverified soundings are over. Now the race to the bottom is a contest of precision, cross-validation, and open data. In the trenches, every meter counts and every number must be earned. The Pacific Plate slides beneath the Indo-Australian Plate at a pace unmatched anywhere else on Earth, about 23 centimeters each year. This relentless movement drives the Tonga Trench deeper, pulling the seafloor down in a process known as slab pull. As the cold, dense oceanic crust bends and plunges into the mantle, it drags the leading edge of the plate downward, carving out the steep, narrow trench profile seen today. The speed of this subduction doesn't just explain the trench's depth, it also fuels a chain reaction of geological hazards. Faults strain and snap along the boundary, producing frequent earthquakes that can reach deep into the planet's interior. Some of these quakes rupture the sea floor, displacing water and sending tsunamis racing across the Pacific. The same tectonic forces that make Horizon Deep a contender for the world's deepest spot also make the region one of the most seismically active on the planet. Here, depth and danger are inseparable, written into the shifting boundary between two great slabs of the Earth's crust. Professor Alan Jameson stands out in the world of Hadal biology, not for chasing records, but for braving the unknown with every descent. His team's landers, Uncrewed capsules packed with cameras and bait vanish into the trench for hours at a time, sinking to depths where the pressure would crush a car flat. Each deployment is a gamble. There is no guarantee the lander will survive the journey, much less return. Sometimes, after a tense wait, the beacon appears and the capsule bobs to the surface, carrying footage and specimens from the world's most extreme ecosystem. Other times, silence stretches on, and the fear of losing irreplaceable data becomes very real. Every successful recovery feels like a small miracle. 
At these depths, Jameson has documented scavenging amphipods, tiny crustaceans that swarm bait in minutes. They are not a single uniform population. Instead, different species dominate at different depth bands, forming a patchwork of communities that change with every few hundred meters. The Tonga Trench, with its steep walls and isolated pockets, reveals new patterns with each lander drop. Precise maps are essential here, not just for navigation, but for understanding how life clings to the margins of a shifting, perilous world. In this environment, the boundary between discovery and disaster is razor thin, and every successful recovery feels like a small miracle. Legends about a secret challenger to the Mariana Trench have a stubborn grip on the internet. For years, lists and forums repeated numbers that put Horizon Deep just a hair's breadth from the world record, and sometimes even suggested it might be deeper. Old depth values like 10,882 meters for Tonga still circulate alongside modern results. The rivalry persists when the most authoritative bodies, NOAA and the Seabed 2030 project, compile the data, the record is clear. The best direct measurements from the Five Deeps expedition and subsequent NOAA analysis place Horizon Deep at 10,823 meters, with a margin of error of about 10 meters. Challenger Deep, by contrast, stands at 10,935 meters, with a similar uncertainty. That is a difference of more than 100 meters, far beyond the combined error bars. No credible evidence remains for an undiscovered pocket in Tonga that could close the gap. The numbers have been checked, cross-checked, and mapped at a scale that leaves little room for doubt. The rivalry may live on in popular imagination, but the verdict from the world's leading oceanographic authorities is decisive. Horizon Deep is the deepest point in the Southern Hemisphere, but Challenger Deep still holds the global crown. Today, the depths of Horizon Deep remind us that even our best measurements leave room for mystery and for impact. As plastic debris and seismic risk reach the planet's most remote trenches, what lies beneath is no longer isolated from our world above. The true frontier is not just a number, it is how these invisible depths connect to our future. What would you ask of the Hadal world if you could reach it? Comment your thoughts below and subscribe for more.